all the great dialogue work and the great sound effects work. It it was a it was a, gr- a fun dance, but definitely it it, it was a challenge to uh, to make everything so detailed and and uh, spot on. But it not a lot of bickering on the stage because we all kind of knew what we needed to do. Yo, I love talking about the creator. The film is fantastic, so it's great kind of re-exploring the film. Um, I love the contrast when Alfie comes from out of the hatch and uh, she kind of discovers the world. Can you discuss uh, designing the atmosphere for the creator when Alfie comes out of that hatch? And- I'm a f- lifelong fan of science fiction and sci-fi, and I'm also a lifelong fan of natural realism and nature films. Terrence Malick, I've worked on three Terrence Malick movies, and Anytime I travel, I'm recording everything. My honeymoon, I brought my rig and I <laughs> recorded sounds that are out And so I've done extensive recording in uh, Vietnam, Laos, Thailand, uh, Cambodia. Um, and those, those are the sounds that you hear when uh, Alfie is emerging from this underground AI base, which is you know very high-tech, industrial, sterile, um, and it's her first time experiencing the real world and nature. And uh, sh- she comes up and those sounds appear and we're with her as an audience experiencing this new immersive reality uh, that to her is novel. Dean, I know that you were just going to give your uh, input on on Eric's answer there. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Um, yeah, when mixing it, I've kind of put myself into Alfie's place actually and she's never been up there she's never heard it before so it was it's a great contrast from the world that we just left and when we pop out that that ambience uh, comes in strong and it's all over it and it we're experiencing it it as she is and uh, the great recordings that eric made just gave us the chance on the stage to put them all over in the atmos and then uh and then the distant firing of the of the guns kind of takes us out of that serene moment. And it's it's funny. Gareth told us that moment wasn't a, in his first cut, and wow. it, went, it was when Hank Corwin kind of asked him, like, "Do we? You know, I wish I had a, mo- a moment where Elfie is emerging into the world." And Gareth's like, "Well, actually, no. We we did shoot that. It was between setups, and uh, and he guerrilla styled that." that whole moment and you connected it to a story Gareth told us about. Well, yeah, it was, yeah, it was so funny because um, Gareth told us that. And then also he told us another um, sort of story in conjunction with that, which had to do with his first conception, his first idea. Um, When he first started thinking about the film, he was on a driving trip with his girlfriend um, to her family home, I believe in Iowa, and they were driving Mm -hmm. through cornfields. And there were some sort of big sort of factory buildings, you know, next to the road. And he just started daydreaming basically about, huh, like what if a robot like walked out of one of these buildings into a cornfield? And then it sort of took off from there into sort of imagining this whole this whole world. And it was interesting because that that moment that you picked out of Alfie emerging from the from the AI lab into the middle of nature and into this cornfield was really the sort of germ of the original idea from which the whole film sprang. And then it was so kind of funny that actually it was originally left out of the movie altogether and was almost... Uh, us, you know, almost an afterthought to sort of include it. Well, that's the insight I love when speaking with <laughs> gentlemen like yourselves. Now, something else that I noticed that maybe I didn't even pay attention to when I initially watched the film is the power of silence. Um, there's this great opening scene uh, where where Joshua is kind of like running out and uh, and and she's kind of like going off into the boat. And there's this silent moment. Can you guys talk about, and Ethan, can you talk about the usage of silence in the film? One of the things we love about working with Gareth is that he really realizes that the use of silence is probably the single most powerful tool that we have as sound artists, you know, the ability to take it away. 
Um, so he was, there was a few moments throughout the film where he was encouraging us to go in that direction. And, and that moment you just brought up was, was one of them. Um, so I think he had it in his head from the beginning. And then, um, you know, it becomes this sort of beautiful internal moment. Whenever we take sound away, you know, what it immediately does is sucks us in as an audience member into the internal world of the, of our characters. And that's exactly what it does in that moment. And it makes it incredibly emotional because, of course, what's happening is this 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 um, bomb basically has just gone off this explosion, which is, you know, wiped out um, everybody seemingly um, except for Joshua, who, you know, in the next moment, of course, he wakes up in a in a hospital bed um, in, a, in, you know, in recovery um, and his his lover, his wife is not there. Right. So. Um, it, I, I just love the way the use of silence can immediately put us into the point of view of our characters. There's no other, there's really no other tool we have in our sonic, you know, toolkit that has that kind of power to instantly put us like with, with laser precision into the point of view of our, of, of whoever we want to do it with. And, and there's numerous places in the film where we sort of do this in different ways. That's, that's the other part of it that makes it fun is that there's so many different ways of doing it. There's not just one way, but it's all about the context. So it has so many different permutations of, of value. Speaking of the scene that you just talked about, if you, if you don't mind, we did try it a couple of passes where everything was real. Everything was played in reality. And then we started to peel away the sound to go silent and something. It took a couple of times for us. To, yes, it's great to go silent, but the rhythm that you have to hit when you go silent is so important because we went silent maybe a couple of passes too early or maybe a couple passes too late and it wasn't working until we got the rhythm right. So it's very important when you do go silent, the rhythm has to work. The one other point I want to bring up about it is um, it's easy because it is such a powerful tool. It becomes easy, like any powerful tool, it becomes the temptation is to start using it too much to overuse it. So then you almost have to hold yourself back from you know from from using it too much because that immediately like puts it into like gimmicky kind of territory um and and you know we don't want to like we don't want to destroy the power of it by by using it too much so we have we have to ration ourselves in a way first of all this is a one of the coolest conversations i feel like we're actually like this is something that would be on like the the blu-ray extras this kind of discussion, because it gives me such a different insight into this film. Uh, I kind of want to break down another sequence that I absolutely love in this movie. And that's when the uh, the bomber robots kind of run onto the bridge and, and Alfie kind of touches them, powers them down. Um, it's almost like the spiritual uh, like sequence uh, of events that happen in that scene. Can you guys walk me through that scene uh, with, with the sound from it? So this was the first sequence uh, we ever got from Gareth um, and the picture department. And, uh, and it, it was like a 15 minute chunk that, uh, we started on is before we worked on any other thing. And of course there are no visual effects at all at that point. So we're just imagining what's going to be happening and putting sound to it, which is great. It's a very freeing kind of part of the process where everything is kind of malleable and you're honing in on how do we make this the coolest thing it can be. And of course that whole sequence, zero scenes, green screen. That was all shot on location in Thailand on a real floating village with hundreds of real extras. And, and that moment uh, between Alfie, who is like the most advanced AI robot in the world, and G14 is the name of this bomb robot, 
who in the film is the most rudimentary robot in the film. You've got that whole spectrum, each pole at the end of each spectrum now meeting. And of course, the purpose of this bomb robot is to kill Alfie, destroy Alfie. And uh, I love the build to it. This robot, you know, we're, we're playing its footsteps in the distance. It's running across this long wooden bridge. And it's like a Jaws moment. You just hear, <laughs> and it gets bigger and bassier the way Dean mixed it as it approaches and gets close. And, uh, and then it stops and kneels in front of Alfie. She has this sort of power with technology where she can connect to it and communicate with it without words. And, and she touches it on its sort of forehead. And like you said, it's a spiritual experience. And the first time Ethan and I were working on the scene, we're like, we can't use just like electronic or synthetic sounds for her power here. This is spiritual. And like, how do we take our breaths away in this moment? And so we have this big battle going on all around us. She puts her hand there and we suck it all out and we get internal. And then you feel her power, the sound of the, her energy building. And instead of using synthetic sounds, we wound up using the sound of a didgeridoo, which, oh, wow. uh, which to me is a, a beautiful musical instrument that has this um, evokes spirituality. And uh, so that's what we used for her energy sounds. And it builds and builds and builds until we snap out of the moment when, when, when she's shot. Um, and uh, I remember we, we got the architecture of that moment down. And Ethan and I were always our worst critics, right? Our, <laughs> more so than any directors. And, uh, but both of us like looked at each other and like, do you have goosebumps? Yeah. And we both had goosebumps. And that's like our thermometer for, is this working? Are we on the right track? And yeah, and I, and I love that. Like the goal is if we can give ourselves chills, then we know we can give an audience chills. Dean, as the re-recording mixer, can you explain the process of blending the sound design with the dialogue and the music to achieve that final mix? Thank you. Yeah, it's quite a quite a dance. And I wish Tom Ozanich, our uh, dialogue music mixer, was with us because uh, I thought he did just a fantastic job with so much dialogue and so much ADR. But the dance... The beauty with Tom and I and uh, and with Ethan and Eric, our sensitivities are the same. So we kind of get what we're trying to achieve without too much uh, bickering between the two of us, like, you know, like a like a couple. But <laughs> we we do work well together and we kind of get this. We know what the scene is going to need. And so the the blending comes pretty natural. Uh, it's how we're feeling emotionally with it, but sometimes you, you know, there's some really great aspects in the music at the same time. There's some great aspects with sound effects. So we, we, we kind of try to give each other our moment and then peel back to give the other space to, to play. But again, the dialogue work I think is spectacular in this movie and uh, between all the great dialogue work and the great sound effects work. It it was a it was a, gr a fun dance, but definitely it 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 was a challenge to uh, to make everything so detailed and and uh, spot on. But it not a lot of bickering on the stage because we all kind of knew what we needed to do. And also, Eric's yeah. approach too is um, his aesthetic allows for that to be a lot easier because he he creates the architecture of, okay, this whole section, I don't want to play music. I want it to be totally real and visceral, like you're there, you know? Um, and uh, oftentimes we have to like fight for those sort of moments and pitch it and try to like, can we carve out a moment where it's just like real and visceral, like the beginning of Saving Private Ryan, you know, where there's no music and we're just like right there in the middle of it all. And with Gareth, he's like, oh yeah, no, that's my intent. That's how I want it to be. I've always wanted it to be like that. So it's, there is a built in shape to the soundtrack that we don't really have moments where music or sound effects are like competing because by Gareth's philosophy and the architecture of his taste and how he's built these sequences, um, 
Uh, he's being very intentional where we're doing what. Well, look, gentlemen, I love the creator. Congratulations on all the success and the Oscar nominations. Uh, it's one of my favorite movies of the year. So thank you very much Excellent. for your time. I really appreciate it. 